Hello everybody, welcome back to my small farm channel. Today we're, uh, well, I shouldn't say today because it's going to be a multiple day kind of thing. In this video, we are exploring my very first biogas chamber build. I guess the proper term is a biogas digester. But this is based off of a small model I first saw from some kids in the Pakistan Science Club. And it looks incredibly simple, pretty straightforward. So yeah, let's get started and I can show you just how easy one of these things, in theory, is to make. Okay, so because this particular uh, 20 liter or so water bottle leaks, I won't be using it for my actual project. However, I decided to, to uh, well, I decided to do some test drilling on it just to make sure that it, things would work. I will need to use something wider than half inch PVC for the top. I'm okay with that, I have my parts. I may be using half inch PVC on the side. This whole thing is going to need to get painted, but while we have it like this, I'm going to kind of discuss how it's supposed to work, or my understanding of how it's supposed to work. So I'm going to ask you to please forgive the crudeness of my drawings and engineering here. I'm a gardener, okay? Um, so. On the top here, we have basically our fill tube situation. Your compostable matter goes in, goes all the way to the bottom because this pipe should go all the way to the bottom and on our build, it will. That all kind of piles up down here under my little squiggly line, we've got our solid matter and it kind of separates and you've got your semi-solids and then you've got your liquids that are gonna be at the top of this. And we have an outlet pipe, an effluent pipe coming out of the side and the way this is going to work is when the fluid level gets to above the bottom of the pipe it will slowly start to drip out into my waiting flower watering container because apparently this is like a wicked garden fertilizer so that's you know part of why I'm into this so now we've got well dead space in the top of this that in normal circumstances would be filled with air but because this is a closed environment, it's going to be hopefully filled with our uh, biogas, which is primarily methane and a few other little things, carbon dioxide, whatever. But we're shooting for the methane in this. And the methane, as it collects in the top of this, is going to force out any oxygen because it's lighter and therefore is going to take up that space. The oxygen is heavier, it's going to go down, it's going to escape any way it can. So it will also try and fill the bucket, but being air, it will just go up. And eventually, this void will fill with our biogas, at which point in time, I'll have a little valve on here that I can release, purge my line, and in theory, I should be able to produce a fairly pure, hard to see, very pale blue flame out of our CH4, our methane gas, our biogas that comes out of this. Now, there are questions that go along with this and there are things that make this particular build decidedly different from what you would see well in almost anything else for example in a larger like an IBC build this pipe inside would come down because you'd have greases and fats and stuff collecting along the top your solids at the bottom and you want to draw that liquid from the middle this is not going to be fed anything like meats, greases, oils, any of that stuff. This is going to be fed dog waste because I know for a fact my dog is a high volume methane producer so I'm certain that those microbes or bacteria or whatever they actually are I'm sure he's got them in his gut so counting on him to pull one through for me. On this one that I've gotten started you can kind of see how I intend to do my methane collection turns out with these water bottles if you just push that little center piece out um, this is three quarters I believe piping or t clear tubing fits right in there nice and snug I am gonna put a bead of liquid rubber around that just to ensure that it is you know gas tight then I've got a nice valve here it's connected to the straw temporarily I assure you that's not actually gonna be part of my system but for the now, I wanted something so I could find it on my bench a little easier and I wanted to know exactly what the diameter was that I was looking for for the pipe that will be exiting this and it turns out I can take this straw to the hardware shop and be pretty much good to go. So, yes, 
our methane is going to be collected out of here in the long run. Got a few things to do to this water bottle though first. So let's get started on actually making the water bottle digester. So if you recall our mock-up, I really only need to do three things to this. I need a hole on the side, a larger hole on the top, and a well sealing cap. And then this is basically done. Well, I've got to paint it after that, but we'll get to that. So anyway, mods to the bottle, two holes. Now, I have noticed um, when drilling through plastic, and I've drilled through it a lot with my aquaponics adventures on the other channel and such, once you get your hole started, it's a good idea to put your drill in reverse and kind of melt your way through more than drill your way through. You get a much cleaner cut, and I'll show you that in a second because I forgot the tripod. That said, we are in the shop and there are a wide variety of things that I can set the camera on. <clears throat> Excuse the frog in my throat. This is going to be really annoying, so be prepared to deal with your volume, um, but I'm going to leave it at actual volume for the sake of video representation here. I am choosing to make my effluent hole just below this top ridge. It's not showing up very well on the camera. But as I said, we're going to start forward here. Then I'm going to switch it into reverse. And you'll find you don't break your wrist as it's trying to get through the plastic and you get in general a smoother cleaner cut now this isn't perfect but that's okay I've still got some work to do to this before my pipes going through it anyway and I forgot to mention it but I used a three-quarter inch bit to drill through here for my one half inch PVC piping alright for this next hole this is a little trickier I've got to use an actual hole saw bit and I apologize because uh, the sizes have long since been worn off of this but this is essentially a little bit smaller than I need for the one inch pipe so it's probably actually a one inch hole saw I am going across the bottle to the opposite side to put in my feeder hose or my feeder tube and once again I'm going to start this forward I'm going to try anyway. Then I'm going to flip it into reverse. Which, especially with these hole saws through plastic, produces a nice clean cut. So I learned that back on really flimsy Rubbermaid totes seems to hold true for every other piece of plastic I've cut so far. The next bit of fun here is it is slightly too small for my needs so there are a lot of things one could do. I could take a knife and just kind of carve away the edge. I could take some sandpaper and you know sand away the edge. I'm actually going to grab my heat gun and warm up the edge so that as I shove this through hopefully it'll kind of seal back up but I'm not counting on that. I've got some liquid rubber in the house that I am going to use for a proper type seal here. Again, we've got a, a lovely less than happy sound that we're dealing with here. And I will need both hands to do this properly. But you can see I'm just kind of going around the edge with the heat gun, warming it up. I don't want it melting or dripping or anything, so this isn't even on high. But with that slightly warmed, I should be able to slide my pipe right into that. Now because I want this pipe to stay pretty much straight up and down and I put it into an angled top I've needed to tie it in just a little piece of copper wire here no big deal nice and easy to twist easy to cut yeah it's strong enough to hold it in place. We got the top of a little water bottle here that I'm going to use kind of as a funnel kind of toying with the idea of duct taping that into place. This part here doesn't necessarily need to be airtight because it's going to be below the level of the liquid which creates something of an airlock like you would find in fermenting stations. Okay, uh, so next I basically need to do the same thing for the half inch PVC on the side. So I apologize, typical Canadian apologizing for everything. I should have picked out the camera for this but I did not. What I have applied around this pipe and this pipe here is a very generous, probably too generous, layer of liquid rubber sealant. And before anybody asks me uh, what brand, it is literally liquid rubber. 
brand, okay? So, I've used it for quite a few seals over the years. That bucket just won't empty. <laughs> Surprisingly, I've had that thing for four or five years. Still works just fine. Anyway, I need to let this dry and cure and become a nice tight seal for me. So, on my end of things, this is on hold for a couple of days. But, if it's going to be on hold for a couple of days anyway, I can at least throw my first coat of spray paint at this. So we'll do that really quick. All right, I apologize because I know this camera and it just got windy. So you're probably wondering why we're painting this and there's a very straightforward answer. It's not to make it look better, although it probably will. Eff effectively, what we're doing here is we're creating an artificial stomach. In a stomach, you don't get a whole lot of light. So for these bacteria or cultures or whatever they actually are to be perfectly content and making us lots and lots of methane for our biogas, this needs to be dark. So I'm just using a brown from Tremclad for this first coat because it was on sale. Oh, and that's why. Well, don't want that going at the camera. All right. Okay, well, I guess my nozzle got all clogged up there, but it seems to be back with the program now. I'm going to avoid painting around these seals. Well, not like directly on them anyway. So I'm going to go at this with another can of paint later. I want it to be good and dark in there. So yeah, right now I'm just kind of using up some It Was On Sale spray paint. All right, well, so much for not painting the liquid rubber before it sets. I uh, got a little carried away there, but <clears throat> still got lots of paint left. Still got lots of liquid rubber left if I need it. And uh, yeah, in theory, I got a lot of waiting now. So we'll be back to you guys in a couple of seconds. And I'll be back to this probably in a couple of days. All right, guys, so here we are. We're back a couple of days later. I still haven't permanently attached this. But as you can see, typical YouTuber, as you can see, my paint is well and truly dried. I put way too much liquid rubber around there, so it is still a little smooshy. But I think it's sealed enough that we can carry on to the next stage of this adventure which is replacing the cap with my methane collecting hose. Now I was a little worried about using the original caps on these things, but they are, uh, well, take some effort to get that off. Let's just leave it at that. Now, I found a piece of radiator hose that worked even better than the clear tubing that I had in mind. Fits perfectly through the pop-out center of the water bottle cap. Follow it down. Do, 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 do. It's a little longer than I would have liked, but it'll work. And then the other end, I've got just a uh, one half Aqua Dynamic flow controller here and simple little tube clamp. Tighten that up as best I could. Pretty sure I'm not going to get any methane leaking out of that. That's currently open, so we'll want to fix that. Much better. Now, in theory, we're just going to pop this right on there. It'll make a nice tight seal and this thing is ready to go. Now, before I actually do that, I'm going to use this larger hole for my initial filling point. Okay, I initially commented that my plan was to use this to recycle my dog's waste, uh, but I don't want to be... I don't want to be touching that with my hands, okay? So I'm going to use a larger version of a build for that. I've got some barrels uh, in mind up at the Ag Co-op. I'm going to find out, uh, well, whether or not I can get my hands on them. And uh, if I can, I will be using that to make a dog waste system. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fill this with some compost, pre-started compost from my pile out in the back, because right after I made the first part of this video, I went inside, I watched a fabulous little experiment with a couple of cola bottles and um, they didn't paint it, they didn't use poop of any kind, they just stuffed kitchen waste in there, filled it with water, capped it up, sealed it up and lo and behold a week later they had this little tiny needle sized flamethrower working. So sure, it's not producing massive amounts of gas and I'm not expecting this to produce massive amounts of gas. This is simply to prove concept and then I'm going to build something larger for Lassie's poop. 
like I said. So, we're going to go out now. We're going to uh, get some compost in this. We're going to fill some water into this. And then it's uh, time for the old set it and forget it thing. I'm going to put it by the open window here in my shop. It's a little warmer than it is outside, so hopefully that will help us develop a good culture. I'm still leaning towards bacterial culture in there, and uh, hopefully we'll get some good methane production before too much longer. I hate making videos that take me a week to make and 10 minutes to watch. So, yes, out to the compost pile. So here we've got the landscaping compost. This is just basically lawn clippings. And uh, I really am just going to start shoving a few of them into my center cap here. Not going to fill it by any means though because there is supposed to be a ratio of about half to half. But I am going to get some in there like this. Just dry while it's fairly easy to do. We can't really see it in there. And then I'm going to start... Oh, hello little frog. You don't want to get mixed into this. And then, like I was saying, I am going to uh, mix up a bit of a slurry. With cow dung, you would mix it half and half, so I'm going to go probably one-third lawn cuttings to two-thirds rainwater and uh, I'm gonna pour that in until it starts to come out my overflow so oh you may notice I took the knob off of that kind of felt it was unnecessary so yes I need a slurry bucket I'm opting to use the bottom half of another water bottle that I've cut off as my slurry mixing station we can see it's well below the overflow point on that so I'm gonna mix this up top that up with water. My plan keeps changing as I go. Nothing new here. I'm just gonna mix a whole bunch of this in. Get some more in there. Get some more in there. Grab my handy dandy piece of PVC pipe here. Start mixing it up. And this is why I'm in gumboot. Alright. That's not quite the consistency I'm looking for here, so I think I'm going to throw another couple of handfuls into that. That, I think, is closer to what I'm looking for. It almost looks like a thin cob mix when they're always mixing it up in uh, these larger digester type videos. Alright. Now, I'm not sure how well I thought this out for getting it into my little digester. But I will figure that out <laughs> and get back to you. I've got this basically filled now. I set it up with our half water bottle just under the overflow there. Shouldn't get a lot of overflow. And I'm just going to cap this on here. It is going to take two hands to get a proper seal. Wow, are those caps ever nice and tight. Okay, so I've got my hose traveling up here because methane will rise, oxygen will drop. So any oxygen that's in that should come out and as methane builds up in the hose then builds up in the container oxygen should be forced out the overflow here along with any extra liquid or whatever now I do need to put a little bit more liquid in here to top it up now that I've got it in place so we'll see if I can do that on camera or not I'm definitely gonna want to make something a little more permanent and stable for my filling funnel here but I just want to top this up until it starts to flow out here again. Shouldn't be too much. And there we go. Those dribbles mean I'm there. Excellent. So now, it's just a matter of putting that on there, A, so I know where it is, and B, to kind of cap it so no new oxygen forces its way down the tube, which it shouldn't anyway because the feeding tube here is well below the water line comes down to about here if you recall and then we've got about this much lawn clippings in there comparatively the rest is water and hopefully this has started I guess fermenting and creating our methane methane depending on where you are hopefully we'll check back on this in a couple of days I'm expecting oh I don't know probably a week before I can actually produce a flame out of this. All right, everybody. Well, you know what? A quick change of heart. It's been a couple of hours since I made that last clip. 
And uh, while I was going to wait until this thing is producing some flame, I really don't have the storage space on my camera, so I need to get this file off of there, which means, yeah, there will be a follow-up, a part two to this. Be sure to sub to the channel if you're uh, kind of looking forward to seeing that. And um, if it's already up, it'll be up here somewhere as one of those little clickable boxes at the end of the video. So thank you all for joining me, and I will see you in part two. Troubleshooting, hopefully not, and uh, yeah, burning stuff, hopefully. All right.